Hey guys, Long Haul Larry. And time to put this Kenworth T680 back together. We got most of our parts. We're gonna be doing a new flywheel, resurface flywheel. Got a new pile of air and it actually turns. Um, input shaft, new clutch forks, and a new clutch. So let's get started. The, um, the grease line thing said that they Kenworth's being weird about it. They said it's on order, it's just not there yet. far. Have it. Should be great about there. <clears throat> Alrighty. Open in this moment. Is our clutch yet? Pull that out. Hey guys, so we got her set in there. It's all set in place now. And the bolts are just, you know, just ran in a little bit. Now we need to go through a torque sequence and we need to do a two torque sequence. And there's a pattern to it and I printed it out for you guys. So if you wanna screenshot that, you can see that. That's your torque sequence for tightening these bolts. And the first one is going to be 92 foot pounds. So we're just going to go through and torque them down. And somebody's texting. Oh, I got to turn on my torque wrench. Oh, what the heck. I had it set from the last thing I did. Here we go. I figured that they would be there with the impact. But don't, don't hurt the double check. This is not something you want to come loose, right?
And that's why you go through the pattern the torque and make sure you don't miss one. And there we go, 12 volts. So now I'm gonna go back through and do 184. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm, I'm gonna to have to be in the way to do this one. This is gonna take everything I got. I'm kind of thinking I might be able to turn the motor over by doing this. Um, if that happens, set my torque range. If that happens, there is a little plug right here, and you can stick a pry bar up in there and catch a tooth at a flywheel. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it like this. I'm gonna sit sideways. Yeah, I'm gonna have to sit sideways. All right, there's one. Yeah, I just turned the motor over. Thought that was gonna happen. There we go. Okay. We are in. Whew. All right. So our flywheel is installed, and so now I need to wipe this down. It's it's clean already, but I got so many handle and I got some grease on and stuff. So I'm gonna just wipe it down and uh, get the clutch ready and start installing the clutch. All right, guys. So we have our flywheel all cleaned. And we have our new clutch put on our jack. And I gotta tell you, I had to take a break. <laughs> I had to lift this out of the box and put this on my clutch jack. Really no way to get around it. It was 150 pounds. Kinda believe that's over my weight limit of lifting right now. But oh well, we got her. Well, we got her all assembled here. I'll show you what you do here. Um, I've cleaned this surface off, some brake cleaner, right? But this is your clutch plate here. There's another one inside here. And you'll see printed on here it'll say intermediate plate so this guy this plate faces this this is called the intermediate plate um this one is all assembled this jack this clutch comes this way you cannot take this apart so it's already done so but you can just visually look at it make sure it's on there make sure it's assembled right and then on this plate it'll say on here too it says intermediate plate side so you know that goes against this side you want to make sure that you put this on correctly. If you don't, you're going to be pulling it again. So, we put that on there. And then I had to run to the hardware store. <clears throat> um, I had these two pins. And I used these as a, to hang the clutch when I install them. And... Um, the other mechanic, we did this other one, and he did all this. He was underneath here and did his work, and I had these, and I could not find what he did. They're basically just 7 16 bolts, and they just fit right in there, like so. And um, and then I always cut a little groove in the end of it for a flat screwdriver, so I can unthread them. But you just take them, thread them into the holes on the flywheel. And I usually just pick two up on the top. Just get them in there enough that the threads are going to be in there decent enough to hold. I have a clutch jack. This this is very important if you do not have a clutch jack and you're hanging this without a clutch jack, lifting it up in there, then you really need to have this. But I have a clutch jack. It's not greatly important, but I still like to do it. It helps with alignment. Okay. Oh, I got my clutch jack backwards. I was showing you guys that, so I got to turn it around. Oh. 
was it in my head? All right. So now you remember, I have everything blocked. And I'm gonna tell you that I, I, a video just came out about how the clutch put it on there. I cannot understand how somebody would do this with the transmission. And a subscriber once again said, we do that all the time, we found it would be easier. I'm telling you, you're doing it wrong. I'm just telling you, there's no way to get it aligned correctly, you're gonna see. But, each their own. But, our, so everything has stayed the same, so our angle should be the same. So we're gonna jack it up in there. And before I even get to it, I'm gonna say, you're gonna see, well, we do it, and this, all right, that's fine. You can argue all you want to. But I have a truck at home, an O2 Freightliner, and I bought it with 350,000 miles on it. I put a new clutch on it. When I did a rebuild, 1.2 million I looked at the clutch and guess what it didn't even need to be replaced oh I just took the camera over when I did my rebuild at 1.2 I didn't even need to to replace it that's how it was perfect there was nothing worn on that clutch whatsoever and I, um, there we go. Boom. There we go. We're seated. We are evenly spaced all the way around the whole thing. <coughs> and, um, I, it, the clutch was perfect at 1.2 million. I did the injury build. I actually installed the same clutch back in. Didn't even machine the flywheel, nothing. And put it back together. And um, um, that clutch is still in there. And I'm at just over 2 million miles. So. You know, if you, you can think, well, I just pop them in there with that. You get two million miles out of your clutch. It also goes with the driver too, if the driver's burning up the clutch. But I'm just saying, if you do it properly and do it right, it's it'll last you. All right, once again, I'm in an issue of, I got a very bright light in my face. Now I put Loctite on here. Um, it does. I know they don't say anything. Dean clutches about doing about putting Loctite in, but I don't know. I just put blue Loctite on. All right. Now I can start putting our bolts in. Oh, and one other thing that that you always really should do is whenever you do this and. I don't know if they say to put new bolts in. I never really have. I never really, unless you see a problem with the bolts. But um, um, I always put new lock washers on them. Because the lock washers, after being on there, being compressed, you know, for that long and the heat and everything else, they lose their distemper. So I always put new ones on. Because here's the issue with putting a clutch on the transmission. I, I just, I cannot picture how it'd be done in the world. Because you just saw how I did this. I crisscrossed it, tightening. You have to do that, otherwise you're gonna seat the, the thing, it could push up and not get the clutch center. Then it's gonna be wearing on the input shaft and wearing all that stuff out, wearing your throw out bearing and all this other stuff. And so you have to get it centered. And that's why you use all the guide pins and everything else. And then you crisscross the bolts. 
and tighten them and that pulls it in there straighter. Um, how are you gonna do that with transmission? All you got is a little lookout thing here that you can stick a thing through there and you can tighten one. And what are you gonna do? Turn the motor all the way over, tighten one. Turn the motor over, tighten another one. Turn the motor all the way over, tighten up. That's crazy. So, this is what it is. But now they're all in. And um, before I remove my jack, we need to remove the shipping bolts. Here is the shipping bolts. There's four of them on the clutch. So, we need to set the clutch. Here it is. Remove those bolts. What the heck was that? Mm -hmm. Same thing, going one side to the other. You're gonna see the springs for the seat. And there we go. So the pads are all in, everything is set. These are your shipping bolts. And I'm gonna tell you, <clears throat> I had to go buy new ones and I had to put washers because I couldn't get the exact size. So, to reset that other one. So you should save these and you could just like paint the heads yellow or something like that. That way you don't throw them away. You know, oh, there's a special. And then, you know, mechanic can't throw away my studs like this. So I'm gonna paint these yellow too, so people don't throw them away. They just don't know what they're doing, what they are, you know what they're doing, but what they are. So now we can release pressure. And we just pull our clutch jack out. And there we go. The clutch is installed. Now we gotta torque it. Now I'm gonna tell you that they're probably already torqued, but just wanna double check the stuff, you know what I mean? So we need 50 foot pounds, which is not really a lot. Kind of surprises me at 50 foot pounds. I cannot see what's going on here. I don't know how I'm gonna record this and do this, but basically you just push the transmission up, everything's gonna be all lined up, everything's in the same spot. You push it up in there and get it lined up and being by myself, I'm gonna have to go behind the transmission, push it, go back, go, roll around one in the front, Make sure that the shaft is lining up, raise it up to that point, go back and forth. I gotta go constantly, go back and forth, so. We'll see. Come on, big girl. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. So this is what we're doing is every time that we jack it up it moves away from it and then we have to come up here and pull it towards because it barely clears things back there so we just have to keep pulling it in then go back there and jack it but we're lining up pretty good it's gonna go in so another another couple cranks back we go <laughs> Oh, 
on. See, we're hitting all these cables and stuff. It's very tight. Let's see where we are. Duck your head. You hit your head. All right, so we can come forward a little bit. We're almost there. We're gonna have to go a little bit over. Just a tiniest bit. All right. Go up just a little bit. Forward. The hose getting hung up. And that's how easy it is, boys and girls, when you keep things lined up. Things just go right together. Now you just gotta get these clutch fingers to go in. For some reason, it wants to pull back on me. I think it's the cooler up here. Yep. I have these wheels set up on uh, this uh, tranny cart now. Came with these wheels, they're just junk. There we go. It's kind of that cooler, it's a, what it is is a fuel heater or fuel, yeah, fuel heater or whatever. There we go. That's up on, it mounts on top of the transmission. Nope. Just gotta get our fingers in there. And you can see here, I'll show you. You see these the clutch fork here. So there's these flat spots here, and he said you just have to keep that straight while it goes in there. As soon as it gets on these flat spots here, then I'll go from behind and then I'll push the whole transmission and I have to turn the shaft to be able to get these lines to line up for the clutch plates. But first, I want to make sure that the, you got to make sure these clutch. Usually, you have two people doing this. One person's all up here going to a higher, lower, lower, you know, left, right. And then he's up here and he's guiding this on. And then the other person is kind of pushing and directing. Oh, well, I'm doing everything myself. And we are good. We are past. Okay. So now we're hitting. That's it. Hear that? That's the that's the input shaft, and the splines are hitting the clutch pads. So now I have to go from behind, and I have to turn that yoke back there until it it gets in there. So I'm gonna go back there and do that. Okay, so now they are in. And that's how you do it, boys and girls. She is in there. See, just, if you have everything lined up, and it's not a huge thing with putting it in there. You know what I mean? 
it's not a big deal. I mean, I'm doing this with a broken back, so you know, it's not broken anymore, but you know what I mean, recovering. So now we are close enough that we can start our bolts. So we'll put a few bolts in there and tighten a few things up and then we'll pull it in the last half an inch or so. This hole to line it up. This is not the bar that I usually use. This is a nail that we use to pierce oil filters. There you go. And put one up here. gets in. That got it in. Okay, we'll go over on this side. I need a ratchet. Doesn't have enough power. Body close. There we go. <clears throat> I just need to put a, the rest of the bolts in. I'm going to get them. Here's one. And I will get the impact and start putting them in there. And I'll drive them into where they're just about tight. Then I'll go up on the top, put the top ones in, tighten those, come back down, tighten these, I pull cinches up everything tight. Once I get most of the bolts on here and most of the bolts up there, then I'll pull the transmission jack out and then it's piecing all the stuff back together, putting everything, hooking everything back up. And we are done. No problem. Slip right in, no problem everything brand new well guys we are all complete and now i just gotta clean up my mess on here all the tools and stuff and um make sure that you grease that that uh throw out bearing um and you want to put enough grease when you're greasing it you want to see grease come out of the throw out bearing onto the input shaft i know a lot of people go oh a lot of my kids they go you just go a little toot toot a little greasy you know because you don't want too much bare grease in there because it's going to go get on your on your clutch brake and then it won't work. No, that's that's false. You need to have a little bit of grease coming out of there. That gets on the input shaft and it works its way into the input shaft. It keeps everything lubricated, lubricated inside too. Um, it will not affect your clutch brake. A lot of people have that gumption too. Boy, I'm looking at myself in the camera. This is the glory life of be, being a mechanic and getting underneath the truck. People say, oh, I'll tell you, the truck's dirty. You should get underneath the truck, eh? <laughs> they get pretty greasy and oily underneath them. But yeah, this is a life right here. This is, this is, uh, I look like a raccoon. I suppose I should get rid of a glove here. 
We'll grease them out. Good for you. So the last step of doing this is to go in here and you will need to depress the clutch five times. Okay, that will set the clutch. And that's a tip for any drivers out there. If you feel like your clutch is slipping, pretty much all the trucks nowadays will have um, clutches, will have the automatic clutches. And basically what you do is you just, when you're stopped, you just depress your clutch five times and that advances the cam to where the pads are all the way tight. That will advance your cam and it will set your clutch. So a little tip for you driver still out there you can just do that um some people they you know they'll say oh my clutch i think it's slipping they're coming into the shop all the guy does is goes in there boom 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 pumps five times you're good <laughs> and they charge you for it so that's all you gotta do so i'm gonna let you guys go i'm gonna get my mess cleaned up around here i'm gonna go test drive this truck first i probably should clean up before i get in there and um and this one's all done on to the next project so I hope that everybody out there is having themselves a great day, great night as you watch this your video. And if you're not, you can certainly try that all over again tomorrow. I think I need a shower tonight. That's what I'm thinking. Just got a little grit in my teeth. Pulling that glove off. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. Bye.